Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Chef Deborah from Roca's Bakery in Greensboro, North Carolina. You can visit us at rocasbakery.com on Facebook or Instagram and visit us at the Piedmont Triad Farmers Market in Greensboro, North Carolina on Saturdays and Sundays rather from 7.30 to uh, 4 p.m. Uh, every weekend. Today we're going to be making a beautiful little French uh, butter cookie called a madeleine. And we have a special madeleine form for these cookies and I'm sure you've seen them in the coffee shops. Some of the large coffee chains uh, sell them prepackaged. You're probably not going to see the chocolate that we're making today because most people make a vanilla or a lemon but we're going to do chocolate and lemon with lavender leaves today. So we've already buttered uh, with melted butter, brushed the forms and we put them in the refrigerator so that the butter hardens so that when it melts and baking the batter it helps so that the cookies don't stick and you get a real buttery flavor on the outside of the cookie. So we went ahead and, and, and did that before we um, started the show. But you can find these forms at Williams Sonoma. You can order them online uh, at a number of different places. They are a little expensive. They're about uh, 28 to 35 dollars depending on where you go. They do make mini forms too, about half this size. If you want something, uh, you can use it for like for cornbread. Um, you don't necessarily have to make a cookie out of it. So they're a nice little uh, pan to have in your kitchen pan repertoire. So we're going to take our dry ingredients and we're going to sift them together and then we're going to put them in our mixing bowl. So we've halved the recipe today uh, because a full recipe makes uh, 30 cookies, which is a lot. Um, so we've got uh, half a cup of flour. We've got a pinch of salt. A pinch is like an eighth of a teaspoon. So in case anybody know, uh, wants to know, uh, we've got a um, half a teaspoon of baking powder. And then we've got a tablespoon of good quality cocoa. And we're just going to sift this together to make sure it all gets uh, nicely incorporated before we add it to the, uh, and all the lumps get out. If you can see, especially with cocoa, sometimes uh, it, it gets lumpy. So we want to be sure that we push all those lumps out of the way so they don't get in our cookie batter because oftentimes the lumps uh, don't get uh, mixed up well and you'll get a lump of cocoa and you don't want to bite into that bitterness uh, when you're making your cookie. So we're going to go ahead and dump this into our mixer bowl. Get this out of the way here. And then we're going to take one tablespoon of good quality honey, a clover honey. You don't want to use a real dark honey for this. You want something lighter like a clover or an orange blossom would be nice since we are adding oranges to this. Um, I'm from Florida, so we uh, born and raised, so we had a lot of oranges there. And we do have, let me get my recipe here to make sure, we have a quarter cup of sugar. We're gonna mix up in here. We've got, um, a good tablespoon of orange zest. We're going to mix up in here. We have one egg and it looks like about a tablespoon of orange juice. And so we're going to just take our whisk and we're going to mix this up together. Let me add our vanilla too, but half a teaspoon of vanilla. So this is all incorporated well before we add it to our dry ingredients. We have four tablespoons of melted butter that we're going to add to the batter after we mix the dry and these wet ingredients together. We're gonna to add that separately. We'll put this on low speed and we'll just go ahead and add it and let it mix up. Oh, you can smell the orange. It smells so good with that honey. Really, I love orange and uh, chocolate together. It's a great smell. Then we're just going to head and we're going to drizzle the melted butter in just down the down the sides of the bowl. We don't want to dump it all in at once and we're going to stop and let it incorporate a little bit. Otherwise it just beats the batter too long and it activates the, too much of the gluten in the flour and the cookies can be tough and we don't want that. So we're just going to just slowly add it. And you want to be sure not to put the hot butter in here um, because it will um, change the texture of the batter a little bit. So we want the butter to be a little bit cooler. But these come together so quickly. They're so easy to make. And I like to finish my cookies off with by hand so I can make sure that it's the right consistency. And make sure that we get everything mixed up together. 
So this batter needs to rest uh, in the refrigerator for about an hour or you can put it in the freezer in a smaller bowl um, for five or six, seven minutes and, and then take it out. We want it to be a little bit stiffer. So we're going to go ahead and, um, and let this rest in the refrigerator for a couple of minutes and we'll be back to put them in our form, uh, pan forms. We'll see you in a couple. You see our batter has chilled for a little while in the refrigerator, so we're gonna go ahead and put them in, a, in our forms. So this is what the batter looks like. You can take two spoons. We're going to, we're looking at filling the cookie forms about a third of the way, a little bit more than a third. Now you can use a scoop, in the bakery of course we use a scoop to portion out everything, so all the cookies are the same size, but uh, you know, for, for the home bakers, a lot of times they don't have those specialty things, so two spoons works just as great. And these cookies will expand and fill the entire shell form. And then we're going to, when they come out of the oven and they cool just a little bit, we're going to dip them in a very thin chocolate orange glaze and sprinkle them with some uh, orange zest and they're gonna be absolutely delicious. Great with an espresso or a cup of tea. Can you tell I like coffee and tea time? <laughs> So we're gonna pop these in the oven, uh, 350 degrees, and they don't take long to bake for about, should I start checking them at about seven minutes? And we'll see you back as soon as they're out of the oven. So our chocolate madeleines are out of the oven and I've let them cool a little bit. And before they cool too much, what we're gonna do is just flip them um, out of the form. And you can see they just, they usually just pop out really easy. You can use your fingers. Sometimes they need a little gentle nudge. That's why it's important to butter the form really well and make sure it's, uh, it's in the refrigerator uh, cooling so the butter hardens. And you want to you know, let them cool for about three or four minutes and then take them out of the shells because if you let them cool all the way without popping them out, they'll definitely stick. These cookies are wonderful, but they have their own temperament, kind of like uh, two-year-olds or three-year-olds. <laughs> you know, sometimes they're a little stubborn and you just gotta kind of nudge them to do what you want them to do. There we go. So we're gonna go ahead and let these cool completely. And while they're cooling completely so we can glaze them, we're going to start our lemon uh, lavender cookies. So we're gonna put these aside and we're gonna start with our lemons. So what we're going to do, uh, we've got, uh, I have a recipe here again today because a full recipe makes uh, a couple of dozen cookies. So we wanna be sure that we're not over making all these cookies. And it's good to know what the yield is when you're baking in your home. So we have um, a quarter cup of white sugar. We've got a tablespoon of brown sugar. And we have one and a half beaten eggs. We're gonna add here. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, whip this, mix this to what we call a ribbon stage. It takes about five minutes to whip this up until it's very light and pale and thick, lemony color. And you, we can hold the beater and it will just drop off the beater in like a ribbon like this. So we're gonna go ahead and get that to that ribbon stage and we'll be back in just a minute. So our sugar and egg mixture is uh, at the ribbon stage. And let me show you what it looks like so that you see it's very light in color and it just falls off in ribbons off of the beater. So that, and it's about quadrupled in volume. So it's going to be, uh, we've beaten a lot of air into this. And we you wanna use the paddle attachment. We do not wanna use the whip. The whip will aerate it too much and then your cookies will have all kinds of little tunneling holes in them so we don't want that. So we're going to just set that aside and what we're going to do we've got a half a cup of flour and a quarter cup of baking powder and a pinch of salt and we're going to stir that up a little mix it up and we're going to just add a little bit of the flour on top of this egg mixture and then we're going to fold it in. I'm just gonna stir it and fold it in like this. So these cookies are very light. We're just gonna to continue to add that, the rest of the flour until it's all incorporated. And we're not um, folding egg whites into this, so you don't have to be as careful. You can be a little bit rougher and move a little bit quicker. 
than when you would fold egg whites into something because egg whites deflate a lot easier than the butter and sugar do. So we're just going to continue folding this until it's all incorporated. And then I'm going to put a, uh, a wet towel on the counter here so I can do this myself and pour the butter uh, into this pan and or into this bowl and uh, continue to to mix it up. So we're going to just drizzle a little bit in at a time and then we're going to mix it in. So we, we do this for a reason. We want the fat of the butter, the liquid, to incorporate uh, easily into the flour sugar mixture without uh, overpowering it. If we dumped all of this butter in at once, it would be a greasy mess and uh, it wouldn't look like this. Again, these cookies aren't hard to do. They just take a little bit of time. It seems like anything French takes a little bit of time <laughs> and that's okay because technique is uh, really where the success of your baked product, especially some of these um, products, is where, where you're going to have your success. So if you follow the technique uh, and you follow the recipe, you won't have any problem. And before long, you'll be able to do this without even hardly looking at the recipe. Once you learn the technique of the folding and drizzling in the butter little at a time, it's just as easy as pie. So we're done and our batter is done. So this goes into the cooler like the chocolates did, um, you know, for about an hour. It's a little bit thinner than the chocolates. So we want it to firm up a little bit so that we can scoop it out. So we'll put this in the refrigerator and we'll be back in just a little bit to spook, uh, scoop it into our forms. So we're back with our lemon madeleines and we're going to go ahead and put them in the uh, the pan molds so you can see how thick the batter got once it got refrigerated well. So that's what we're looking for. So we're going to go ahead just like we did with the chocolate and we're going to put the, uh, the lemon batter into these molds real quick and get them in the oven and they just bake so fast like I said in about eight minutes you don't have to bake them long at all. After we get these in the oven we're going to go ahead and glaze the chocolate and decorate them uh, so that you can see what the finished product looks like. So we're back with our chocolate madeleine cookies and we've made a chocolate glaze. So this is about a cup of powdered sugar and maybe a, a quarter of a cup, eighth of a cup of cocoa powder. Just depends on how chocolatey you want it. And then we did, because these are orange chocolate, we did use about two tablespoons of fresh squeezed orange juice. Uh, if you don't have oranges, you can certainly use a, about a quarter teaspoon of orange extract and then mix it together so that it's uh, the consistency is about like this. We want it pretty thin because we want it to run off the cookies so that um, it's not a heavy glaze. We're not looking for a heavy glaze. Now if you don't want to glaze these cookies, you just want to dust them with a little bit of cocoa powder or a little bit of powdered sugar cocoa mix. You can certainly do that or you can make a chocolate ganache and do a drizzle on them. It's whatever your cookie, it's, you can decorate it however, but because I like to do a nice solid glaze, so I just dip the cookies actually, scrape off the excess and then just keep dipping. And you might have to rock them backwards and forwards a little bit and then shake the glaze off. And it makes a nice sheen to the cookie and then you let the cookie dry for several minutes so the glaze hardens a little bit and then you'll be able to stack them on a tray or um, shingle them, you know, on a tray for service, whatever you want to do. Now if you don't like getting your fingers uh, into the chocolate glaze, you can take your tablespoon and you can spoon it over, but just make sure you do it in like a, a ribbon so that it completely covers the cookie like that. I know I have a girlfriend who doesn't like to get her fingers in the food and um, so she likes to use a utensil to do stuff like this, but since I'm, I like to get my hands in the product and uh, nothing like being able to feel it, 
So we just go ahead and just keep glazing the cookies. And like I said, it goes really quick. It doesn't take a long time at all to do. You just move the cookie back and forth. When they're completely cooled, they're not fragile. They're like almost like a little sponge cake. And I do have some grated orange zest we're gonna put on the top of the cookies for a real nice splash of color. And that pop of the flavor of the orange on this chocolate is just amazing. You can use some candied orange peel on here if you want. You're not looking to uh, cover it with orange. You just want to give a little bit of it so that when it hits the, your tongue and the roof of your mouth, you get the, the bitterness from the chocolate, you get this, this orange zest uh, flavor from the fruit, then you get that delicious chocolate sponge in your mouth, and it just, uh, it's a really an explosion of flavors in your mouth, and it's really a delightful experience. And again, this is really great with a cup of espresso. So that is our chocolate orange madeleine cookies all done and ready to be plated. And the lemon madeleines are in the oven baking and as soon as they're done, we're gonna go ahead and glaze them and top them with fresh lavender flowers. We'll see you back in a few minutes. So our lemon madeleines are out of the oven. We popped them out of the forms and we're gonna glaze them and we have our, our standard glaze is thin like the chocolate was with our powdered sugar. Uh, I did use some limoncello. Uh, for the lemon, if you don't want the limoncello, you can go ahead and use fresh lemon juice or lemon extract a little bit at a time because a lot, a little goes a long way with the lemon. Uh, and then make it nice and creamy. So we're going to go ahead and dip the same way that we did the chocolates. Now if you don't want to use uh, lavender, food grade lavender, that is absolutely fine. Yesterday was the first day of spring and I felt that, you know, maybe it was nice to do something kind of springy. Easter's on the way, and uh, it'd be nice to have something that reminded us that spring is here. So we're gonna do some uh, lavender leaves, lav little lavender petals. So you do wanna let this uh, harden uh, or dry completely. If you wanna do it quickly, you can certainly stick the tray in, in the refrigerator on the shelf for about five minutes is all it would take. Nice way to uh, share your love for baking with people that you care about. Now, where to find food grade lavender? That's a good question. I was thinking about that here as I'm dipping. I get it from my supplier, but you can go to a health food store. Whole Foods carries it. Um, I don't know if Whole Foods in your area, if you have one, uh, you can order it online. Your regular grocery store will probably not have lavender leaves. Uh, you don't wanna go to the field and pick lavender and put them on your cookies though because you don't know what kind of pesticides might be on it and you do want to purchase a food grade um, lavender, so it is a little bit different. Um, I have a spice store in my community called Savory Spice and um, I get a lot of my food grade uh, spices and extracts from them and they actually, you can order online uh, from the Greensboro store, SavorySpice.com. Um, they do have stores all over the country. Before we got one in uh, my town, I ordered from the one in Colorado and they shipped it to me. So it's, it's a good uh, outlet for steak rubs. They have all kinds of great salts and things. So that's another outlet for you. So we're done with uh, glazing and let's go ahead and get some of our lavender leaves. And this is what they look like. I don't know if you can see this or not, but they're just tiny, tiny little petals. So we're just gonna, just we don't need to, but just, just a couple on there because the lavender is very, very potent. So uh, we're gonna start down here because I think the, the glaze is already starting to dry and I don't know if they're gonna stick. So you do have to work quickly. Yeah, we'll get these, I think those are already drying. Okay, and our lemon lavender madeleines are done and we're gonna let them rest for just a couple of minutes to set up and then we're gonna go ahead and plate them. See you back in a few. So our madeleine cookies are done. The glazes have been set and we put them on a beautiful oval platter. And as you can see, the yellow really makes the cookies pop. So we've got our chocolate orange madeleine and our lemon lavender madeleines. This is Chef Deborah from Roca's Bakery in Greensboro, North Carolina, signing off for this episode. Please join us for our next episode. We're going to make red velvet cake and 
Roca's banana pudding and our double berry hand pies. So we're gonna have some great fun in our next uh, episodes. Until then, we bake your day better.